How beautiful are those images? Good morning. Welcome to AM Live. My name is Olive Burrows and as is our custom, I have an all-female panel this morning. We are asking the question, the power-sharing lie. Did the Kenya Kwanzaa administration mislead those who voted for them or the nation when they said they were not interested in sharing out positions but were interested in the person at the bottom? Mama Boga, Boda Boda, moving on up. We take a look at that in the course of the next uh, two hours, so uh, do stay tuned. But first, uh, the top stories and the tribunal probing the conduct of four IBC commissioners has recommended the removal of Commissioner Irene Masit from the electoral body. The Muchelule-led tribunal found Masit guilty of contravening the constitution, noting that the evidence before it shows Masit and three other commissioners were involved in serious violations of the constitution during the 2022 election. Kevin Mutai kicks us off. On December 2, 2022, President William Ruto appointed a tribunal pursuant to Article 251 of the Constitution to probe and consider the petition for the removal of the embattled Cherara 4. <laughs> As commissioners from Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission following the disputed 2022 presidential polls, seven days later, the vice chairperson Juliana Cherera, Justice Nyangaya, and Francis Wanderi tendered their resignations, leaving Irene Masset to face the tribunal alone. Cannot come from lawyers from the bar. The tribunal, led by Court of Appeal Judge Agri Muchelule, began the inquest against Commissioner Masset who faced allegations of violating the constitution, gross misconduct and incompetence. Your Excellency, the findings derived from the investigations have satisfied the tribunal that the allegations of serious violation of the constitution and other laws and gross misconduct have been proved to the required standard to qualify our recommendation for the removal from office of Commissioner Irene when a determination like the one you have reached uh, is arrived at, it is not on the basis of rumors or prejudice, it is on the basis of facts and evidence. Masit was the only remaining commissioner. This came after President William Ruto also declared vacancies at the commission following the retirement of Chairman Wafula Chibukati, Boya Molu and Abdi Gulie, leaving it without the requisite quorum as required by law. This occasion is yet again another occasion when we celebrate our constitution that it makes provision for service by all Kenyans who serve in various capacities and of course also provides for sanctions and exit for those who don't measure up or those who are not competent and those who cannot uh, withstand enticements. This tribunal is historical in the sense that it has trodden on completely new ground because there have never been proceedings to invoke Article 251 of the Constitution throughout the history of this Constitution. This now opens the door for the Head of State to appoint a seven-member panel that will recommend a list of individuals to fill vacancies at the Electoral Agency. The move has been met with rejection from the opposition, led by Raila Odinga, who is threatening to demonstrate if a bipartisan task force is not involved in restructuring the poll agency. It was proposed that the selection panel shall include four nominees from the Parliamentary Service Commission, one person each from the Political Parties Liaison Committee and the Law Society of Kenya. Further, two more persons will be nominated to represent the Interreligious Council of Kenya. I am hopeful that in future processes and uh, uh, institutions will be built that have sufficient competence and uh, build on the firm foundation of the law and the constitution so that they can withstand any influence or threats or all manner of blackmail that sometimes accompanies public office. Once in office, the selection panel will within seven days of its appointment consider the applications, shortlist and interview all the applicants. After the interviews, the panel will forward the names to the president for the nomination of one person for appointment as the chairperson and six others as due members of IEBC, thereafter immediately taken to the National Assembly for approval. 
Kevin Mutai, NTV. Meanwhile, immediate former Kakamega Senator Cleofas Malala is the UDA, United Democratic Alliance Party Secretary General. Malala, who was in an Amani National Congress Party member, now replaces nominated Senator Veronica Miner. In changes made after Monday's National Executive Committee meeting, chaired by party leader William Ruto, Embo Governor Cecily Mbarire becomes the new party chairperson, taking over from Johnson Modama. But as our senior political affairs reporter Duncan Hemba reports, Sources say the move by UDA to tap Malala as its spokesperson is part of a grand and elaborate political scheme to make UDA a monolithic party with a clear plan to dislodge ODM from Western Kenya. The ruling UDA party has invaded its Kenya Kwanzaa partner ANC, snatching its fiery and controversial youthful member Cleophas Wahungu Malala appointing him to the powerful party secretary general position following a meeting at state house that effected key changes in the uda party leadership the national executive uh, committee has appointed honorable cecil barire uh, the governor of embu as the party chairperson and in a further move to further strengthen the party uh, my position as a Secretary General will be taken over by Honorable Cleopas Malala. Today as I take over uh, the position of Secretary General, I am alive of the fact that I am taking over a party that has a very strong foundation. A party that is seen as the youngest party yet the biggest party in the Republic of Kenya. A source within UDA party revealed to NTV that Monday's decision is aimed at accelerating the party's plan to spread its political tentacles into Western Kenya in order to topple ODM's reign in the region since 2007 and have Raila Odinga's grip confined to Nyanza. We also have realized that this party requires the services of a full-time secretary general, someone who will devote his all his time and energy. We have new members that bring in new skills, different talent, and people that are well known for their ability to propel ideas into great teams and realization of the dream that we have for the Republic of Kenya. UDA has grabbed Malala from ANC after Msalem Devadi relinquished his party leader position to Lamu Governor Isa Timami. And with Malala now out of the party, it means ANC has no strong voice from Western, which might see the party easily drowned. The ruling parties intend to cast its vast shadow over the Mlembe nation became clear during December 2022 senatorial by-election in Bungoma, whereby it fielded Mwambu Mabonga to compete against Ford Kenya's Wafula Wakoli, a seat that was Ford Kenya's. But when asked whether UDA is engaging in political cannibalism of its coalition partners, it says, Kule mbele, tunataka tuwakikishe kwamba rais wetu amepanga siyasa yake chini ya nguo moja. Hatutaki tuwe na confusion mingi as we get into 2027. Na hiyo naenda kukua uh, one of our mandates kwa kisha kwamba tumuongea na wale wenzetu tuanze kuunda team moja nzito ambaye tunaenda kwa kikisha kura kikuja mwaka wa 2027 we only have one color one color to face our opponents because we only have one government we cannot have one government and several colors the party has announced it will conduct elections towards end of the year once it concludes membership drive Duncan Haemba, NTV. The debate on Mount Kenya's next political kingpin seems to have narrowed down to two individuals, Deputy President Rigathi Gashawa and Kiharu Member of Parliament Ndindi Nyoro. Nyoro, who was edged out by Gashawa in the Deputy President race last year, is now being propped up as an alternative voice even as Gashawa strives to rally Mount Kenya legislators to his side. Will Ndindi Nyoro outrun Gashawa in the race to succeed former President Uhuru Kenyatta as the region's kingpin? That is a question that Sidney Chazima interrogates. Samson Ndindi Nyoro, 
now serving as Kiharu MP for the second term, received accolades from President William Ruto after he was narrowly aged out in the race to be the UDA running mate in 2022. Is one good gentleman, passionate leader of the present and the future, Samson Dindi Nyoro. Barely seven months later, the qualities that drew praise from President Ruto have now resulted into a growing political debate over who will take over from former President Uhuru Kenyatta as Mount Kenya's new kingpin. Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa has for long been touted as the front runner. Rigathi Gashagwa has got the benefit and advantage of being the senior most leader for Mount Kenya and without leadership and seniority, the influence comes with it. However, a section of youthful politicians are now coalescing around Ndindi Nyoro, propping him up for the challenge. This growing support for the young legislator is not only coming from Mount Kenya legislators. Mimi I can confirm kwamba hiyo viatu kijana huyu ametoshea na ametoshea sawa sawa. Na nini msifikirie kuwa mnampenda pekeenyu? In the political circles Having the favor and ears of the president is considered as the highest political capital, something both Gashagwa and Ndindi are boasting of. Mimi kazi yangu pale kwa ikulu ni hiyo. Ni kupanga hiyo laide. Nikiona wewe ulipanda na kutoa wewe nyuma na peleka wewe mbele. Nikiona wewe huku panda na kutoa na kurudisha nyuma, ufanye nini? President akiitana anaanzia dede nyoro tukitafutana network ya huko tunatafuta dede nyoro mnafikiria ni nani tunatafuta with both leaders seemingly equaling each other on that front one factor cuts a clear divide between the two leaders and that is Gashagwa's penchant for verbal outbursts so i get on and kachifu at mimi nasema at wale wali panda wavune kwanza yuko makosa an increasing number of legislators are of the opinion that Ndindi Nyoro presents an approachable option. Ingawaje kwangu naona kwamba ni mapema sana wameanza kuingilia sasa hizi kumaanisha kwamba hawana imani na naibu wa rais Kashagwa kwa sababu ya mawili matatu. Na hao wanaona kwamba heri waanze kujitenga na Kashagwa mapema kuliko kungoja kwamba uongoze Kashagwa uje. Based on his experience and longevity in politics some view Ndindi as a greenhorn for the kingpin status. And as this debate rages on, it appears Gashagwa has gotten wind of the impending challenge from Ndindi. The deputy president took a somewhat unifying tone while speaking in Dindi's Muranga backyard recently. We are also doing succession management and we are going to mentor our young leaders. And I want to encourage our young leaders to look ahead and be prepared for the future. And while the possibility of having an alternative voice in Mount Kenya presents an exciting prospect in the shape of Ndindi, there are fears that his ambition could be his undoing. Anybody can see the early coquetry that Ndindi Nyoro has with ambition. Ambition too has got tragedy as its twin and he may find that various landmines may be placed on his path if at all he raises his head quite early. Sydney Chazima, NTV. That's a question I'll pose to my panel this morning. Could Ndindi Nyoro's ambition be his undoing? Police in Mombasa are investigating a series of attacks in which armed suspects invaded, invade businesses and private homes, stealing cash and items worth hundreds of thousands of shillings. The latest incident of an armed robbery in an ele electronics and Mpesa shop caught on CCTV has gotten residents of Bamburi worried for their safety as police say that officers from the direct of criminal investigations are uh, have taken note monday afternoon and all is calm at the tall light electronics shop in kadzandani area bamburi estate in mombasa city 
24 hours before we visit. Things were difficult for Dorka Smueni, the shop attendant, whose quest to help possible clients turned into a life-threatening experience. The second attacker removing an AK-47 rifle from this red bag that he would use to threaten the victim if she did not comply. In a matter of seconds, the first man was inside her workspace ransacking the cash register and reaching out for any other valuable thing he could get. After a few seconds of trying to understand what had just happened, she followed them out to see their movements. Police say the rifle used in this robbery is one the detectives will be keen to find and investigate whether it is a government-issued firearm or not and how it got into the hands of criminals. Victims and residents decry the security situation in the area and seek more police patrols. Uh, a place like Aqua is very remote. For an AK-47 to appear in a place like this one, it's very easy. It's very easy to get out of the way. It's very easy to get out of the way. It's very easy to get out of the way. It's very easy to get out of the way. AK-47 is a place like this. Meanwhile, police officers are holding a suspect of a home invasion who was caught on camera breaking and entering a home in Tudor two weeks ago where he, together with an accomplice, left with items the family says are worth 350,000 shillings. Kwa nimetoka nimeenda kubeleka watoto madrasa, nikapitia town kidogo kuna vifani likuwa na nuanunua nguo, nikirudi homo hapo chuda, nikakuta kumevunjo wa juu. The family says that when police officers arrived at the scene to conduct initial investigations, it was established that the suspects stole gold jewelry, electronics, and cash from the home. Leila Mohamed, NTV. All right, it's about that time when we take a look at what is contained in the newspapers this morning. With me in studio already is Vivian Tash, who's a governance and policy analyst. Karibu sana. Asante. Had yourself a good night? Yes, yes. We are ready for the day. And uh, of course, as usual, you know, I can't come here and not say hi to Langata people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm Miss Alimika. Ah, <laughs> Kabisa. All right, thank you for joining us this morning. We are waiting on two more panelists. I'm sure they're not too far behind. Uh, but we'll start with the Daily Nation payback. That is the question uh, that is being posed. And in relation to what Ruto takes on Uhuru. Clean sweep with just two weeks to the statutory deadline for his predecessor, Uhuru Kenyatta, to leave active politics. President William Ruto and his Kenya Kwanzaa administration are not taking chances from reversal of policies to revocation of appointments. The president seems keen to rein in Uhuru. And doesn't this, Vivian, inform in part our conversation? Because we're also looking at the parastatal appointments. We're asking the question whether the, it was a power sharing lie. Did Kenya Kwanzaa mislead the public when they said they were not interested in sharing out positions, but uh, more interested in uplifting the person at the bottom of the economic pyramid? We'll get into that. We'll get into that. Um, and I see here former president says he will not retire from politics. More details on that on pages six and seven of the Daily Nation. I also see on the front page Kenya Power takes hit utility farm to incur further 6.5 billion shilling loss on extension of tariff cat. Uh, I see an image here. Men confront their demons at a at man cave. You may think they are fine when you see them walking about, but deep down, they, uh, I beg your pun, uh, what is that word? They seek comp uh, compassion. They're living in a vortex of confusion in a life riddled with uncertainties. 
And then uh, Trade War puts DP in a spot. And uh, I see here Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa and Trade Cabinet Secretary Moses Kuria find themselves trapped by the demands of the Nyamakima, quote, kingmakers, who are now threatening the country's international trade policies and endangering diplomatic ties with China, whose nationals are targeted in a smear campaign for disrupting the thriving grey economy all right uh, in fact i'll have that conversation i'll be having that conversation on monday uh, also on the front page verdict tribunal once must sit relieved of duties at iebc all right let's take a look now oh yes and uh, i see the opinion piece by masharia gaido has also been highlighted on the front page uh, just get down to work masharia gaido wonders if the promise of the so-called hustler movement was no more than hot air Okay, uh, we will most definitely be flipping onto that page. That is page uh, 16. Uh, but first, let's take a look at the front page of the Business Daily. Zooming in for a clearer picture. And uh, Kenya Power Test Regulator with bills set in dollars and euros. Utility says move to ease fluctuating forex rates pain. Users already pay for currency losses in monthly bills. This uh, story by Patrick Alushula, an image here of Kenya Power Acting Managing Director Joffrey Muli. And uh, if I can just, uh, huh, All right. Ooh, my business daily is, is uh, packaged quite fancily uh, this morning. I see in today's uh, paper, we celebrate the top 40, uh, under 40, and... Let's see, there's a chess piece there, right? A pink uh, chess piece, uh, pink and black. I see this is in partnership uh, with several uh, organizations. So uh, let me just unpackage it. <laughs> and uh, take a, a, a closer look at this report by Patrick Alushula. It says Kenya Power will start charging some of its customers in dollars and euros to shield the utility from foreign exchange losses following the weakening of the shilling. And uh, more detail on page what here? Page two. Uh, if I scroll down, Safaricom cuts interim dividend for first time after profit drop. Uh, drop. This one is by Constant uh, Mul Munda. Safaricom has trimmed its interim dividend by 2.4 billion shillings on the back of reduced earnings in the half-year period, marking the first cut since it started distributing profit to shareholders before the end of a financial year. Ticker, now let's take a look and actually the, the wrapping, the packaging around the business daily has to do with this top 40, under 40 women meet the fearless women who have broken the boundaries to rise above disability, poverty and male domination. So these are the top 40, under 40 women of 2023. Uh, this is actually on page, beginning page uh, eight. Uh, Will you allow me, Vivian, to quickly flip over and take a look at who these women are as we celebrate them? Given today we always have uh, a female panel. So uh, what page was this? Uh -huh. Give me a second. Give me a second. I had flipped over to it and then I closed it. So it begins on page 13. Page 13. It's 8, 9. Uh, should be here now. We should be here. We should be here. We should be here. I imagine. What did I? Did I miss it? I don't think I, I passed it. Or perhaps not on the E paper. Perhaps we need to get ourselves. Yes, I think we, we might need to get ourselves a hard copy. Or perhaps I'm just not seeing it. Huh. Okay, so I will find it. So let's move on. But I will, I will indeed find it and uh, make mention, celebrate them uh, this morning. Oh, here I found it. I found it. I found it. Here they are, uh, the top 40, under 40 women. Uh, very colorful uh, page there. And uh, there's an editor's note as well here. This one is by Diana Mwango. And she says the Business Daily's annual Top 40, under 40 women has long celebrated influence and achievement across industries, social status and age. Each year our list showcases remarkable women who have shaped industries and careers. And shall we sample, Vivian? Yes, yes. A few of them. 
I see Nerima is there, which is good. Uh huh. And what page is that? Uh, nine. Nine. Page nine. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Number one, uh, Kathleen C. Minu. She's 29. Machine Learning Fellow, Mozilla Foundation. A uh, beautiful picture there. If I flip over, I see here, ah, Derima Wako, Chief Executive, Siasa Place, 34, mm -hmm. Kerubo Nyamwaro, 33, Biotech Service Leader. Uh, I flip over, you know, this is the one occasion in, in which you see women's ages <laughs> splashed on, <laughs> on newspaper pages. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Frida Simba, Founding Director, Jomo Kidata University of Agriculture and Technology, TVET Institute. Mm -hmm. um, I see here as well, Mary Waihiga Gitao, Executive Director of the Center for Suicide Research and Intervention, Nyambura Gishohi, 37, CEO and Co-Founder. Uh, I can't really ikigai. Ikigai. Yeah, okay. Flipping over. Washuk, uh, Washuka Gishohi, 39, CEO and founder. Ikigai. So uh, ikigai we has two people actually. Impressive. Yes, turns out. We have Aziza Ajwang, 36, senior resident magistrate and high court deputy registrar in Kericho. Impressive women here. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Victoria Simiu, 37, a transplant anesthesiologist. Uh, June Chapkeme, acting managing director, can invest. Uh, we have Kamal Daisy Onyango, and she is HR director, Coca Cola Beverages Africa, Kenya. Uh, somebody I met uh, not too long ago, just this last week at the Nation Digital Summit, and that is Masi Mutemi, partner Nzili Sumbu. Um, hmm, did I pronounce that right? Sumbi. <laughs> Dili Sumbi advocates and a beautiful image of her. I, I believe this is I this was during this image was taken during the uh, digital summit, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we are also celebrating Bitutu Nyambane. She is senior research scientist, Kenya Industrial Research and Development Institute. Uh, Tracy Shundu, she is CEO of Fun KE Science. Sylvia Gadoni, 24, uh, ex uh, esport athlete and Red Bull. Player number 14. Here, uh, did I miss somebody? This, no, I mentioned Tracy uh, Shundu, and who is on this page? I did mention her, which leads Mira Nihar Shah. She's managing director. Uh, help me out with that one. I can't see it so clearly on this touch screen. Let me see. This is number 15. Mira Nihar Shah. Uh -huh. managing, uh, director? managing director. Managing director, sign resins. Signed Resins Limited. Uh, we are also celebrating S uh, Stella Mutai 29. I know Stella. You know Stella? Yes. Geospatial Consultant, World Food Program. Caroline Kasioka Munyoki, 35, General Manager and Co-Founder, Imarisha Mabati. Uh, I see here Madrin Minor, Country Director, Kenya. Uh, help me with that one. What number is that? Number 19. Sistema. Bio, Systema.bio. Systema.bio. We have uh, Catherine Oyeke, a pediatric neurologist. Uh, we have Purity Gakuo, COO, and co founder Kuza Freezers. Uh, we also have here Veronica Thamaini, uh, managing regional programs, uh, Wikimedia Foundation. Manager Regional Programs, and then Elizabeth Mwangi, founder and director of Guiji. Also on this page, uh, number 23, which may require us to flip over, or... Okay, what is happening here? 23 is... My, my touch screen has just gone oh. <laughs> black, or I, I do apologize uh, for that. So, okay. So, I will leave it there as I sort this out, but I will pick it up. What number what? 23, I think. 23. Yeah, what number 23? I, I will I will pick it up, you, but uh, let's you, take a I look. Think, yeah, you have to get back to it because there's Lin Googie as well, which I oh, think many man, people Oh, man, I don't know what's happening. Let me close it and try reopening it, yeah? Uh, give me a second. Let me take... Me just a second. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Business Daily. Read. Uh, we're back. We're back. We're back. Let me quickly flip, 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 flip before I zoom in. So I think that's page 15 now. Page 15, huh? 
Let's see. Ah, there we go. We're back. We're back. We're back. Okay, so we were on number 23. Yes. And I can't see, or is it this one? Elizabeth. Elizabeth Mwangi. Ah, Elizabeth Mwangi. All right, uh, flipping over to number 24, Patricia Mativo, uh, Vice President, United Nations Population Fund. Wow. Uh, Nelly, Cheb uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Mendy Mudinja. Uh, what is that? Uh, Genomic. Huh. G? Genomic scientist. Genomic scientist and founder of uh, Huntington, Huntington Disease Africa. Uh, also up here we have Nelly Cheboy, uh, who is the CEO and founder of Tech. Techlit. Techlit Africa. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. Another other familiar faces. Here's Lynn Gugi, as you're saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> chief executive and founder Lynn Gugi Network. Uh, we have Marianne Gishanga, chief executive co-founder Agritech Analytics. Uh, we have somebody I was in school with, mm -hmm. uh, Grace Murugi Wanjama, head of digital strategy, Oxfam International. Uh, we also have uh, Susan Sawe, group head. Help me there. Uh, Global City. subsidiaries? Global subsidiaries, City, City East Africa. All right, we have Monica Were, Trading Manager, Vivo Energy Kenya. Sandra Njagi, Head of uh, Corporate Planning and Strategy at Isuzu East Africa. Uh, Elizabeth Ndenya Nguli, who is a Vodafone UK Head of Cloud Engineering UK and Global. We're almost there. <laughs> Jean Gitao, a head of uh, biological threat product. Uh, help me with that one. Threat reduction. Threat program. reduction program. I was like, it's not making sense. <laughs> uh, Beatrice <laughs> Chebet, long distance runner. We have uh, Sylvia Musea, uh, PS State Department for Was Life. Oh, we have another familiar face, Angel Budia. Uh, where? Twenty-seven. Thirty-seven. Oh, I would have skipped this. Angel Warira Mbudia, National Youth Council Board. Uh, flipping over, we have Crystal Asige, uh, nominated senator. Uh, number thirty-nine. No, this is thirty-eight. Samantha Kipuri, and she's a group head of media at Dentsu. Dentsu. Yes. Okay. Uh, and finally, uh, winding up this list is Habiba Ali, Mombasa Water Supply and Sanitation Company, General Manager for Commercial and Business Development. Congratulations, uh, ladies. Well deserved. Just looking at some of those uh, credentials. Uh, it inspires us, doesn't it, Vivian? It does. To aspire for, for much more, to accomplish uh, a lot more as we move forward. All right. Uh, to see the list for yourself, you can find... A copy online on epaper.nation.africa or purchase your hard copy and uh, do you have this uh, souvenir uh, to take home with you as well. Okay, Taifa Leo, where are we? Uh, ha mdomo miwili ya Kenya kwanza. Okay, Taifa Leo never disappoints. Serikali ya Ruto ni kama mnara wa... Babeli ambapo kiongozi moja akisema hivi mwingine anasema vile and uh, here we have several leaders who have been highlighted on the front page i think for this one let me just grab my <laughs> my hard copy because it's kiswahili one which is sometimes a challenge for me and then number two that font is uh, a bit is not so clear on clear on my screen okay so wasi wazimio this is gashagwa Tutawatunuku tu wale walio tupigia kura. Ruto uh, then says, tutafanya kazi na wakenya wote, msiwe na hofu. Kwa wale walio piga kura na mna hii, sijui na mna gani, wakenya wote wanalipa ushuru. And then, so that was on the question of uh, shareholders, right? Uh, I see here President Mkali William Kenya. Ruto saying, ningependa, kui hakikishia nchi kuwa kuta kuwa nda nyongeza yoyote ya stima leo au siku za usoni. Uh, David D is there then quoted as saying ukipitia manifesto yetu kwa kina utabaini utabaini hakuna mahali popote ambapo tumeahidi kutoa stima ya bei rahisi and then uh, we have Mosalia Mudavadi's image there this is on uh, lawama kwa deep state the other one was big ali ya umeme uh, gashagwa quoted as saying tunamlaumu uhuru na deep state yake this uh, and then Mudavadi uh, saying contrarily hatuna muda wa kulala uh, ya kulaumiana ni wakati wa kufanya kazi si siasa 
Then uh, Baj, Jini, Nairobi, we have uh, Johnson Sakaja there. Uh, Gashagwa is quoted as saying, Watu wangu wenye biashara za ba, ndio wanaongelewa, hatuta ruhusu jabo kama hilo. And then uh, Ruto is quoted as saying, Ninamunga mkono sakaja kunya mazisha ba, zinazoendekeza zinazo kelele. Then we have an image there of uh, Aisha Jumwa. Jumwa is uh, quoted as uh, saying, and this is on Nyongeza ya Mishahara, uh, watumishi wa umma watongezewa mshahara katika siku moja and then SRC is quoted as saying tumeanza kupunguza marupurupu ya watumishi wa umma finally Moses Kuria there Kuria on uh, biashara za wa China uh, he's quoted as having said hatutoa ruhusu wa China wafanye uchuzi wa bidhaa and then we have Singoi quoted as saying watu wote wakiwemo raia wa kigeni wana uhuru wa kufanya biashara bila vikwazo almradi wana leseni all right okay i will leave uh, the taifa leo there i will invite your comments in a few uh, minutes let's take a look at the hmm, standard standard okay front page of the standard their headline is this why last of charera four had to fall uh, and then up here, I'm seeing LSK six order to quash juice cosmetics taxes. Opposition wins in Lagos City, and I went there because I want to zoom in, and it, it'll cut it off once I zoom in. So here is uh, their top story: Why last of chair four had to fall, according to Tribunal Chairman Agri Muchelule. Uh, Commissioner Irene Masit sank out of her own failure to challenge evidence adduced against times that she questioned witness credibility an image there of a smiling president william ruto smiling uh, justice agre muchalule muchalule handing over the tribunal report okay uh, so uh, and then down here intrigues as mudavadi ally takes helm of ruto party that being clear of us malala and uh, i will invite your comment on that let's take a look at the star Uhuru Raila men hatched plot to rig poll. That is uh, the tribunal. We were just looking at that image of uh, uh, Agri Muchelule. Findings could open a Pandora's box for officials amid push for commission of inquiry into chaos that rocked Bomas National Telling Center. Images of several people, including uh, a former Attorney General Kihara Karyuki, Rafael Tuju, former Cabinet Secretary, Amos Wako, ex Busia Senator. We have here Irene Masit, the woman who was on trial there. We have a former Inspector General of Police, a former Solicitor General on the front page, as well as the Vice CDF, Lieutenant General Francis Ogola. Um, yeah, so. I think I will leave it. I will leave it uh, at that. And invite now comment, beginning with uh, what is now here on, uh, it was on the standard, this one. Intrigues as Mudavadi ally takes helm of Ruto party. Oh, I haven't introduced the rest of my panelists this morning. In fact, I had my poster open, but the app it was opening with uh, was just uh, making it difficult to uh, navigate. Uh, let me see if I can still pull it up. Uh -huh. All right, uh, I, I will I will take time uh, to pull it up. Uh, but with me in studio sitting at the center is Cynthia Muge. She's a woman rep, Nandi. Good to see you this morning. Karibu nice. sana. And a, a new face, at least for me, <laughs> in studio. But she did a C Collective office. And that is Joyce Cheruto. She's a governance and political expert. So Joyce, Karibu sana. That's Cynthia, funny. Karibu sana, NTV. Um, Cynthia, what do you make of this? Uh, the... Uh, appointment or nomination or naming or installation whichever word you want to use clearly <laughs> I, have, I, have, uh, I have myself a thesaurus uh, but uh, the, uh, what's his name Cleophas Malala taking the helm of UDA I thought he was an ANC member commander J. Cynthia. <laughs> thank you so much um, uh, first um, I want to say that uh, I am a UDA member mm -hmm. I am uh, elected on a UDA ticket yes and of course, we went into a collision with uh, the other um, parties, including and not limited to ANC, where Cleophas Malala was uh, dominantly uh, a, um, a member. But you see, um, you see, uh, being a member of a party is basically paperwork, to be honest. So today, uh, previously I was an independent candidate, but it just took me a few hours to go and register as a member of UDA. 
So I want to say Cleo Malala is uh, properly a UDA member and properly uh, he is also a leader in the UDA, uh, in the, in the UDA party, uh, so to speak. And uh, I want to appreciate uh, the fact that the principal, um, the party leader, saw it wise to be able to uh, put other leaders in place because you remember the SG is now a senator, Mudama is also um, a state officer. So it's only fair that we have someone who can be able to have all the time to run the party a business. One of them is, uh, no one is better than Cleophas Malala, honestly, and so to speak. So yeah, I welcome uh, the decision and I support. So does this knock him out of the race for CAS? Um, you, it's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. but, no, constitutionally uh, it should. Of, oh, okay. of yeah. course, uh, but you see, if you're given another appointment and you think it's better, you resign. Take up the other one. So really, yeah. All right. Okay, Joyce, what do you make of this uh, development? And I will scroll through, because I saw something about uh, CS at large somewhere, but I, I, will, I will try and trace it. <laughs> I'll try and trace it uh, in the story. Uh, let me see. Okay, your thoughts, Joyce. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Allow me to first uh, say good morning to Kenyans. Um, and thank you for inviting me to the show. So for Cle Cleophas Malala, he's very passionate, especially during the campaigns uh, when he was uh, uh, running for the gubernatorial, Kakamega gubernatorial race. I saw that he was very passionate about uh, matters Kenya Kwanzaa. And so for me, this is a breath of fresh air to see that he has been appointed as a, as a secretary general. And I think it's well deserved. Yeah, he'll definitely push uh, the UDA agenda forward. All right, so we need to take a break. When we come back, we interrogate a few other issues and then get into a conversation this morning. By then, I should have pulled up the poster. My apologies, ladies. See you on the other side. We welcome you to this year's International Women's Day celebrations on the 8th of March 2023 at the Sarova Panafric Hotel. Under the slogan Embrace Equity, we are celebrating women in innovation and technology. We celebrate women who are forging change and elevating women in the creative industry and women who are building workspaces where other women can thrive. The International Women's Day is also for the young woman. To nataka equality for women in tech, ultimately to empower the women of Kenya, na pia worldwide, to kwena better choices when it comes to health, na say kwa vitu zinatuhusu. Mwenye sikio na asikie, mwenye wake na atulie. Tarehe ni nane mwezi machi mwaka huwa ifumbili, ishirini na tatu, vipoi, vitenge, kanga, vinemba, vitatesa anga. Tukutu we have another opening. It might not be what you're looking for, but the salary is good. Would you be interested? Quiet, everyone! There are no rats in this place! They're laboratory mice that this woman took out of her handbag. Me? My name is Natalia Garcia. Mr. Gomez told me you wanted to see me. That's right. No. No, I can't believe it. This is a curse. No. What do you mean it's a curse? This is what you call fate. Fate my foot. Let go of me. Don't touch me. Head over heels. <laughs> Kagame to Kinshasa. The red line has been crossed. President Paul Kagame wants DR Congo. Its war won't be fought on Rwanda soil. Outlook. When the deal is too good, 
Gig Job Ops fail to protect women, domestic workers, plus our opinion leaders. Tanzania is no longer a fence sitter. It has been busy with things East Africa. Charles Onyango Obo. You can't beat knowledge into children. Invest in them instead. LC Eakuze Magazine. Why it's hard work fearing to be jobless. For this and more stories, get your copy of The East African. Daring Abroad makes me dare. It's the only show of its kind in the world. And now, it's bigger. And even more entertaining and informative than before. From London to Jersey Island. Goma in the Democratic Republic of Congo to the scenic features of Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. And many more places abroad and at home. I watch uh, Daring Abroad. I like the stories which people bring. Daring Abroad every Saturday at 7.30 p.m. with repeats every Sunday at 1.30 p.m. on NTV. Dream home for as low as 1.98 million Kenya shillings in Vipingo Kilifi. SMS Vipingo to double two three six five or call us today on 0740-400-215. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to AM Live and uh, with me in studio, now you know I must show off my poster. <laughs> we have uh, Cynthia Muge, woman rep Nandi. We have Vivian Ta, governance and political analyst and Joyce Cheruto, governance and political expert. Before we took the break, uh, we got uh, the thoughts of uh, Cynthia and Joyce. Woo, what is happening there? Okay, we got the uh, thoughts of uh, Cynthia and Joyce on uh, Cleophas Malala taking over as uh, uh, the... UDA Secretary General. I wonder what your thoughts are, Vivian. For me, it's just it's just intriguing. It's interesting that um, uh, Cleo Malala, who was originally in NC and didn't publicly, you know, announce that you know he was switching parties and all that. Not that he has to, but uh, what comes to mind is that Swahili proverb, "Kikulacho kimguoni mwako." So it's like UDA is. Picking, hand picking, you know, people they think would be uh, instrumental in their growth within the Kenya Kwanzaa constituent parties, coalition parties. And it's just, uh, it makes me wonder whether are they reading from the same script? Because essentially, uh, Musalia Mudavadi is the, okay, not officially the leader, the, the de facto leader, so to speak, of, of ANC. So I'm just wondering how 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 did that work? Uh, but this doesn't speak to Malala's ability and uh, outspokenness, which I think is is good. You know, it's good for a party to have a very um, publicly known and uh, regarded SG. Uh, I, Veronica Maina, who's now the ex uh, SG, I, I have nothing against her, but I just don't feel she was, you know, out there enough. So maybe with Malala being there, we might see some uh, serious party agenda maybe being, you know, pushed and all that. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But it's interesting that uh, UDA would, you know, would pick from one of the coalition partners and immediately give them such a critical position as SG. It makes me wonder, does it mean that there are no UDA, like original loyalists, who would fit that position? Um, someone like Dindinoro, maybe for example, or I don't know any other uh, UDA uh, person who's been loyal, you know, from the get-go. So it's interesting to see how things will will pan out in the coming days. 
Okay. And I've just uh, pulled up the statement that was uh, issued yesterday following a... Uh, that announcement this morning, the uh, UDA National Executive Council held a meeting under the leadership of the party leader, uh, President William Ruto. Uh, NEC deliberated on a raft of issues and uh, noted that they are preparing for grassroots elections, which will be conducted at polling centers across the 47 counties. Mm -hmm. In order to adequately prepare for this exercise, the UDA party will roll out party membership recruitment driver to enhance registration. And then uh, that drive will run from the 1st of March to the 30th of April. And uh, in a further move aimed, aimed at solidifying the party, NEC has appointed Embu Governor Cecily Marere as the party chairperson, replacing Johnson Modawa, who has since joined the Parliamentary Service Commission. Malala takes over from Veron Kemaina as the new Secretary General. Yala MP Omar Hassan takes over as the party vice chairman, replacing Kipruto Arab Kirwa, uh, while ja uh, Jafeth Nyakun. MP for Kitutu Chache North replaces Omingo Magara as the treasure, treasurer. Mwala MP Vincent Mustioka is the new party organizing secretary replacing Karisa Nzai. The new officials will serve on an interim basis mm -hmm. ahead of the national elections slated for later this year. All right. And then they say Kazi. Nikazi. <laughs> Let's take a look uh, just uh, so we can comment before we get into the conversation. I'm saving the Daily Nation one because it informs uh, our topic of conversation. Uh, but uh, looking at, uh, it was which one? It was Taifa Leo. And uh, they're talking about the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, government, to quote them, Mdomo Miwili ya Kenya Kwanzaa. Uh, my understanding is that there is confusion within their ranks. One person says this today, the other person says something else tomorrow. Who do we believe? Uh, you know, Cynthia, what do you make of this headline on the Taifa Leo? Well, um, I think um, the headline looks a bit malicious because uh, what would you want to say? Uh, anyway, everyone has uh, is entitled to their opinion. Uh, you can say whatever you want to say. But Midomo Miwili, I think it doesn't speak much to exactly what's happening because you see, someone has to make a decision. The decision has to be made. And you see, I always say I prefer someone who makes a wrong decision as opposed to someone who doesn't make a decision at all. So it's, it's only fair that uh, when there is an issue to be decided on, someone takes the lead, makes the decision. As to what other people would want to say, you see, no matter what you do, someone has a contrary opinion anytime and every time. Uh, but uh, we also need to check in, um, on issues of, uh, you know, it also looks funny and fishy that we come from the same house and then you're saying this and I'm saying this, you know, mm. almost at the same time. Yes. So I think that is something that needs to be uh, checked a little bit so that, uh, you see, this is a country that uh, is being led. This is um, uh, the, the, the leadership that is speaking. Mm -hmm. So they must also be able to learn to um, go out there with a clear mind and be able to communicate Maybe in different ways, but the same ah, communication. Okay. All right, Joyce, your thoughts on this? Have you been thrown into confusion? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there is any confusion, really. And I actually agree with Cynthia that uh, that headline is a bit malicious. Because let's say when um, the deputy president spoke about uh, people, the, the, the company, for me, he was speaking about loyalty and he was speaking about loyalty and the president and he didn't say that anyone will be left out he was just saying if you're loyal then you will be considered or given something and the president also spoke in the same manner saying that uh for him no one will be left out so it's speaking about loyalty speaking about all kenyans being equal so for me, I, I believe they're speaking with one mouth. I don't understand when, when it comes to speaking with Mdomo Miwili, Sielewi. Wilewi. Sielewi. Aha, ya, lakini tukiangalia, venyo wa mesema, tukiangalia kwa mfano beye umeme, because they've sought to back their case, right? Mm. The cost of power, you have President William Ruto saying the cost of power will not go up. Uh, David D saying uh, that was not, we did not say in our manifesto that uh, let me just see exactly what they have said because uh, detail is important. Ukipitia manifesto yetu kwa kina utabaini hakuna mahali popote ambapo tumiahidi. Nisaidie hapo, Vivian. I can't see, that, that word is not so clear on my screen. 
ambapo tumeahidi kutoa stima ya bei rahisi cheap power you will not find in our manifesto anything to do with cheap power uh, there, uh, then uh, there is a quote here on deep state uh, there is a quote here on bars in nairobi there, is a, there are several quotes here on uh, raising um, salaries and then again uh, of course uh, the china this one let me just show you the picture what did i do again <coughs> The China Square, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Sir. Yes. So, in your view, Vivian, midomo miwili, wanaongea na midomo miwili au moja? You remember, Olive, there's a time I think we were here and we were discussing about, uh, I think it was during the appointment for the either PSs or CSs. And I told you, Kenya Kwanza is a house built on sand. And it will inevitably sink. It's not, I'm not surprised that various leaders within the ranks of Kenya Kwanza are speaking different things. Why? Because their interests are varied. Uh, DP Gashagwa seems hell-bent on, uh, you know, entrenching his place as Mount Kenya kingpin and he's forgetting that there are other Kenyans. I mean, Kenya is more than Mount Kenya. Um, the president Ruto is probably trying to, you know, push uh, his agenda also at the same time. So it's like everyone seems to be pulling in the direction of where their interest is. Dindinyoro uh, on this side also wants to become, you know, Mount Kenya kingpin. So that's their own. They're having their own tough wars on that side. David Ndi in one breath is saying the bringing down cost of uh, electricity was not in the manifesto yet it was mentioned in the manifesto so you wonder is it that he didn't read it or is it that he didn't you know he's not aware of what was put in the manifesto yet the president has clearly said that uh, cost of power will not go up but the truth is for us consumers we are witnessing increased cost of power so we are wondering okay what's happening it's like there's a declaration being made here you know, j just for the public, you know, it's like speaking, but there's no action because when you go to the ground, power cost is has gone up, uh, and not just power cost. You know, cost of basic commodities, cost of uh, fuel, uh, and 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 a lot of other things. Taxes are also being proposed to go up. There are more charges like NSSF and NHIF, which they want to go up, and yet we are not seeing what are the measures being put in place to so that there's accountability of of monies and funds and taxes that kenyans are paying uh for the longest time after the inauguration the leaders from the kenya kwanza uh government kept saying oh we're in this position because of the uhuru regime it was like blame game after blame game and it was like an ending and so many kenyans were like you know what we just want service delivery just just deliver on your promises so this thing we're being told bottom up you know we are going from the bottom and going up we're wondering did they, did they mean the prices did they mean like the prices will go from down and keep rising up and if that's the case shouldn't the incomes then follow so that we are able to cater for our day-to-day -day needs you can't you know you can't tell us you're increasing electricity okay the president is saying it will not go up but the reality on the ground is different okay cost of education is going up food prices are going up electricity is up fuel is up seriously how are we supposed to survive as kenyans can the kenya kwanza government just tell us how they want us to live what will they do so that we can work make money feed our families because i think that is what kenyans want a good environment to work to do business not to pay taxes through your nose and not see anything meanwhile the government is just becoming more more and more bloated now i think we are waiting appointment of of, CSS. of cas right. and, and and i'll pause you there so that because we are coming to that we're coming <laughs> to that uh, cynthia do you have uh, a rejoinder uh, to that before i move us along now uh, to the tribunal verdict on irene masit well of course i do um uh, number one uh, of course being a member of uh, the coalition the kenya kwanza which is um, uh, the, the, whatever you want to call it, that is the ruling party, or uh, yeah, so to speak. Uh, you know, the statement of uh, it's like kind of built on sand. Of course, I am part of it, and I am <laughs> I'm not made of sand at all at all. I want to say that um, you see, uh, every time that you start something, it's going to be really hard, and it's going to be really tough. And you see, every time something is tough, 
you know that this is a precursor of very good things that are coming. So I want to say that, uh, to be honest, uh, the situation that the Kenyans are in, which I agree with Vivian in totality, it is really hard. Mm. Like uh, everything is, uh, the prices are going up, unga prices that everyone keeps complaining about, the power. And you know, this is something that all of us are facing. It's not like uh, it's, uh, it's being faced by a certain group of Kenyans. All of us are in this same pot. If we are boiling at 90, we are all the same. We are boiling at 90. But I want to say this. You cannot keep subsidizing things, including power and even the foods, the consumables. It is not going to be sustainable. And let me tell you this, uh, President Ruto, I think is a very focused person and he's a person who has made a decision. A decision that he will be able to pull Kenya and Kenyans out of this mess. But hey, it's not going to be a snap of a finger. It's going to be painful. It's going to take time. But finally, we will get there. Because I can tell you this, what is the point in subsidizing uh, electricity or unga right now? That means you borrow to subsidize. After you have borrowed to subsidize, you are again expected to pay. How do you pay? You have to pay through tax. Where do you get the tax? You get the tax from the same people. Now, it is going to be the same and more painful. It, it, this is more painful. And the other approach is let everyone pay for the high price for the meantime, like six months. Because at the end of the day, there is a debt that has to be paid. How is the debt supposed to be paid? Through tax. Who is going to be taxed? It's me and you in this country. So it is the same decision. One is just more painful and the other one is less painful. The less painful is more expensive. The more painful is a bit, uh, is a bit less expensive in terms of we are going to get there uh, soon. So I want to say that uh, it's not easy, especially for uh, the Kenyans uh, that we keep, keep calling uh, bottom up, like the bottom ones. It is not easy. I can tell you this. Even in my house right now, there is a queue of people. Someone on school fees, someone slept hungry, someone is sick. You know, it's, it's just so bad. But I can tell you this, we are getting there. And I want to say that uh, as much as it's painful and looks so, um, you know, I think uh, not popular a decision that the president has made, I want to say I support him in entirety. Let us get out of this hole. Let us stop digging it. And then we can be able to enjoy in the future. So um, I think that is, um, th that, that is what, what I want to say. Uh, the issue of uh, prices from down up, huh, it's neither here nor there. Uh, but we are going to get it regularized at some point and very soon for that matter. Okay. All right. Uh, I saw that the IBC selection panel was gazetted. Uh, this against uh, the background, and I will pull it up in a moment. Uh, this against the background of Irene Masset, the tribunal, uh, having given its verdict, presented its report, made its recommendation uh, to the president. That was the star. And uh, no, but the image, though, I wanted to pull up, actually, is this one. Recommendations, according to Tribunal Chairman Agre Muchelule, Commissioner Irene Masit sank out of her own failure to challenge evidence adduced against her. Instead, she questioned witness uh, credibility. Uh, what does this mean, Joyce, now that we have, uh, now that uh, IEBC is commissionerless at this point uh, and the selection panel has been gazetted? Raila Odinga had called for the formation of a, of a bipartisan task force force uh there were 14 there was a 14 day ultimatum given i don't know we are on day what yeah, on day uh but uh, how do you in your view joyce how will this uh, shape the coming days so uh i'll speak into what Raila odinga has asked for he's asked for dialogue in terms of the iebc and my question is how do you have a dialogue within a process that is guided by law because um in 2010 uh, Raila was part of um, the, he was part of the team that came up with the law as to how to select the uh, IEBC commissioners. So I'm wondering why are you asking for dialogue right now, yet you were part of the process in 2010 and you came up with a process whereby you involve the Public Service Commission, the Parliamentary Service Commission, the um, Law Society of Kenya and the other actors in the process. And that process has been duly followed, whereby all the uh, five um, bodies have brought forth a member to the selection committee, whereby now the president has now appointed the selection committee. I'm seeing that it's, it's, everything is actually falling into place in accordance to the law. 
So um, uh, in terms of them now doing the mandamano to state house, uh, in my view, the, I think the farthest they will reach is Serena, to be honest. The farthest they will reach is Serena. Vivian is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Vivian, uh, what do you make of uh, Joyce's remarks? So this is a, a process that is defined in law. So this bipartisan task force. Yes, it is a process that's guided by law. But there needs to be, uh, it needs to see the process and even the con conclusion needs to seem like it's just and fair and inclusive. Remember, this, there were some changes that were proposed through Bunge that changed uh, some of these recommendations before uh, and reduced like the number of... From the uh, Parliamentary Service Commission. Yes. Although that was informed by, in my understanding, by a court judgment on the same. Anyway, the, 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 the process kind of changed somewhere along the way. Uh, but even not speaking to the process, speaking to the last two elections, uh, there's been a lack of, okay, let me not say a complete lack of confidence. Um, by a section of Kenyans, there, there are Kenyans who are not confident that the IEBC, uh, as it was constituted, was fair. So it was important that uh, the process that's put in place to select the new commissioners should appear or seem or be perceived as, you know, a fair and inclusive process. The thing is, if you, uh, going by how it is right now, I think it's LSK, the Interreligious uh, Council, uh, Public Service Commission, uh, Parliamentary Service Commission that are, I think I've left out one, and um, uh, party LS liaison. Party, okay, yeah. so there's Interreligious inter inter Council, yes. uh, Law Society of Kenya, uh, PSC, and uh, yeah, the party liaison. So, yeah. so, 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 so the reason uh, the Azimio party leader is probably asking for dialogue is because when you look at it uh, from a political perspective, all these institutions are, 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 op are it's possible to manipulate who they select so that they are aligned maybe to one one to the government side so to speak because if public if the, the person public service commission is speaking will definitely be aligned to kenya kwanza law society it's also possible to manipulate and make sure that whoever is being picked is aligned so if in essence when you look at these people the numbers it's about like five of them it's very possible to have five people uh, aligned to the government side how how does that make it you know a fair process so i think uh when uh, rilo dinka was asking for dialogue it was just so that to see can we have something more inclusive not to go against the law not to disregard the law but to see how even within the law we can have a more inclusive process uh, that people feel we are involved our voices have been heard because at the end of the day uh he represents the interests and views of very, very many Kenyans. I mean, you can choose to disregard if you don't want, but the truth is he does. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to get, you know, over five, six million, you know, votes uh, in, in, in an election. Uh, so I think that what uh, Baba was saying was not that we should disregard the law or forget about the law. It was just how does the law uh, work for all of us. In any case, the law is there to serve the people, not to oppress them. Mm. So if you feel like, you know, it's oppressing you, you should come out and say, hey, maybe we should relook at this thing. We shouldn't just say whatever we are given is what we take. This is not the democracy we fought that was fought for. This is not the freedoms we fought for. I, I think that's my, my, my take on that. All right, Cynthia, your views. I have pulled up the Gazette notice that was shared to my WhatsApp, but I'm not finding it very clear. I don't know what it looks like uh, on your screen. So I'm, I'm trying to trace the original, you know, oh, which so has uh, more pixels or I don't know. <laughs> it looks <laughs> what, okay here. It looks okay there, so you mm -hmm. can see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see. Selection panel for the recruitment of nominees for appointment as chairperson and members of the IEBC in exercise of the powers conferred by Section 7A of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission Act, uh, etc. Et uh, President William I, uh, William Samoy Ruto, President and Commander in Chief, appoint uh, Bethwell uh, Sugut, Novis Uralia Otieno, Charity Kisotu, Evans Misati James, Benson Ngugi Njeri, and Nelson Makanda, as well as Fatma Saman, to be members of the selection panel 
for the recruitment of nominees for appointment as chairperson and members of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. This is dated the 27th of February. Uh, what do you make of this uh, development? Uh, because Cynthia... Uh, he has gone ahead to gazette uh, these members of the selection panel. He's moving forward with the process, despite or irregardless, <laughs> uh, to quote a word that the former president used to like to use, <laughs> of uh, uh, Raila Odinga's position on the matter. But uh, some things that has been raised by Vivian is that Raila Odinga is not somebody you can afford to ignore, given uh, the millions who voted for him and the millions who did not vote at all. Uh, sure. Uh, of course, I agree that uh, you cannot ignore um, the right honorable Ray Laudinga. Uh, by all means, you can't. Uh, but right now, uh, you know, when an election has been won, it doesn't matter how many million voted or did not vote for you. There's one government at one time. So um, I want to say that uh, one, the reason why uh, the president goes ahead and um, uh, done, uh, does the Gazette notice amidst uh, the complaints and uh, uh, voices of uh, maybe we should have done this, maybe we should have done that. Number one, I want to say the due process was followed, and I can assure you and confirm to you that uh, Parliament participated completely and entirely. The both houses, the Senate and the um, uh, National Assembly, they participated uh, duly. And uh, if the right honorable Raila Odinga feels like he has reservations, you see, this is this, this, this is something that is anchored in law. You have the avenues, and the avenues that will give you um, the, the, the ending that you want, that you want to be had, is right under his nose he has hundreds of members of parliament in bunge that can be able to uh, speak or pick it up from for, for, from there for him so i want to say that if he has a problem yeah he can just come to parliament or he should have uh, been to parliament and be able to raise the issues that he has and then it will follow the due process for the for, for it to um maybe for his uh, suggestions and all that to be incorporated but i want to say this when anything and everything comes to the floor of the house every coalition or every party has a say through the members and i want to say that that you cannot ignore members and you cannot fail to use the tools that are you have that are available and want to do it in a different way you see members of parliament have been specially elected and elected by the people of kenya and they have actually given them the authority to speak on their behalf and make decisions on their behalf so he has the best tool in parliament which is the members of parliament and i think that is uh, where the right honorable ray laudinga should uh, pick it up take it to parliament and stop the mandamon is going to, no, not going to do a thing in fact he goes for mandamon and we are in bunga i don't even i have time to lose track i don't even know where he was and what he said because it's none of my business i want to say see what government business is coming and what kind of plans does the government have for the people of kenya as to where and when is the ra last rally or the next rally or the current rally is I at times not have no idea really. All right, <laughs> Joyce, I have the last one on this one. So Vivian has said something interesting that uh, the seven, uh, the Bethwell, Bethwell Sugut, and the six other select uh, committee members might be partisan. So for me, I would want to see proof as to how they are partisan because you know if it's someone like me who was who would, if if it's my name which would have come up on the list uh, being in the select panel. De definitely people will see my rhetoric, they will see my social media, and they will see that I am partisan mm -hmm. to UDA and to President uh, William Samuel Ruto. But I'm looking at the names that are coming up uh, uh, of the appointees of the select committees, and I don't think they are partisan in any way. I've gone through their social media, I've gone through their rhetorics, and for me it has not come across as, as if they were partisan. And you know, Raila Odinga mentioned something um, and he said that President Ruto is unilaterally, uni, Lucky. unilaterally mm -hmm. uh, wanting to uh, select the select committee, appoint the select committee, which in my case, in Kibaki's time, when he unilat unilaterally, 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 yes, for me sorry. It's operationalization. <laughs> yes, <laughs> when he unilaterally selected 20 members, or of the select committees on IBC, that's when it happened. But this time, five he uh, five organs have been involved, and so for me, I'm wondering where why in before the 2017 presidential election there was no hue and cry from Raila Odinga to say uh, that uh, all the Cherera four have been selected in a certain way. 
I'm wondering when the select committee was selected before the 2017 elections, why there was no hue and cry? Is it because now when it's a favorable um, time for you, then you say nothing? When it's unfavorable or you perceive it to be unfavorable, that's when you come out and speak out? So, uh, go ahead, respond. Okay. So I, I didn't say they were partisan. I just said that uh, the manner in which the selection has been done has left it open for manipulation. And it's possible for it to be manipulated. Why? Because there's a member from Public Service Commission. Basically, you're working for government. So you're, mm -hmm. you, you know, you're doing the bidding of government. If you want to keep your job and be in good stead with the government, it's possible to be, you know, to be coerced or manipulated for a, a specific outcome that the government wants. The same with the interreligious uh, committee members. We've seen how the religious leaders, leaders have been trooping to state house, trying to show that you know they 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 are they're working well with the government. So even them, I'm not saying they're partisan now. I'm mm -hmm. saying it is possible for them to be manipulated because of how they've been they've been selected. So when we say that uh, unilateral selection of these people it's not that uh, the president has gone and selected one two three people appoint openly but it can be done chini amaji as mm -hmm. we say because why you're the, you, you know you wield state power it's possible to say lsk i want this kind of person and lsk will not refuse why because they want to align and work with the government but all that the is same, speculation all that no is left to we, speculation. we are seeing the way this government is being run we are seeing we are seeing how Former appointees of Guru Kenyatta have been removed from office and new people appointed. We are seeing how a lot of appoint appointments are skewed towards Mount Kenya and Rift Valley. I mean, we are seeing these things. We are seeing, you know, you're told, uh, what's that saying? I've forgotten. I've forgotten the saying. But it's not everything that, you know, you have to, when you match Angalia, you can perceive, you can see the, the manner in which things are happening this is it seems like this is the direction we are going and that is why it's not surprising that the dp would say kenya ni kampuni ni kama kampuni when your shares no are the ones who are being rewarded so basically what he's trying to say if you if you are not loyal to us if you did not support us during our campaign please kaini kando kwanza to to malizane na watu wenyewe to support and yet all of us pay taxes all of us deserve service delivery all of us deserve equal distribution of kenya's resources because we contribute to it. So we are not saying that the president has gone and handpicked people. They have been handpicked through various organizations, but it is possible for these people who've been picked to be manipulated so that a certain desired outcome uh, that, is, you know, that favors the ruling party is what is done. And I think what the Azimio team is saying is that we will not be party to this. Because the truth is, even if we go to Bunge, like Moshimo is saying, the, the 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 ruling party has has majority in terms of numbers right now so even if you brought up something and brought it to the vote most of the members will vote based on their parties not based on we are on accountability to the people it will be based on which party am i in so even if something is right or good most people will vote most of the members will vote based on which parties or you know their 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 allegiance within bunge so the outcome may not bring anything so are we supposed to just keep quiet and say oh well you have the numbers in bunge so just do what you want with kenya no we all have a stake and the constitution has granted us political rights to picket you know to 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 voice our concerns when we feel something is not right so i think baba and azimio are well on track Okay, yeah. so we need to take a break, but we'll, we'll come back. I saw uh, Cynthia taking notes <laughs> while you were speaking. So we'll come back with the discussion at hand. I've also pulled up uh, the editorial cartoons for our consumption. We take the break. I'll, I'll leave you with this one uh, from the standard. Uh, William Ruto on one side, Rilo Odinga on the other, Wajiko in the middle.
taarifa teke teke na e-paper. Stay in the know on the go. Getting the full story bilangori. To sign up, choose your preferred subscription. Use the promo code SUBZ22 to get 20% off and pay. Get your favorite newspaper and enjoy the truth anywhere, anytime. For inquiries, email e-paper at ke.missionmedia.com or call 0790 Subscribe today and get your tarifa teke teke. Having yearned for a return to Inter Milan, Romelu Lukaku got his wish. But the move has not turned out as planned or hoped. On loan from Chelsea, injuries have caused Inter to think twice about paying a transfer fee to keep him beyond this season. Nor are the Blues keen to have him back, which means Romelu Lukaku may be about to enter football limbo. With Glovo, you have the city in your hands. Unatamani chakula different. Order Glovo, Yaribu restaurant Mpia. Dapper Zimisha. Order Glovo and save the day. Download the app and order anything you want. Marcelo, where's your witness? We don't have all day. They'll be here. Well, how do you know that? Maybe your witness changed their mind and decided not to keep lying for you. Remember he got sick because of too much sadness? Because we couldn't be together? Oh, Nicole, it's nothing like that. But, Mom, it is. He told me so. And he also said he could get sick again if I don't stay with him. He also told me that you want to be happy with Mickey. But I'm the one who's standing in the way of you being with him. Do you realize how affected I was by that anonymous letter? And do you know that I haven't even slept a single night since that moment? The, the idea came from us both, but it was mostly her idea. Stop lying, Amaranta. It was your idea. Every penny that you stole from the company with your scams. Oh, you're going to pay the price, Amaranta. It had to be you. Shield your families from germs. When dental is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness causing germs. Everyday use of dental keeps my loved ones protected. Own your dream home for as low as 1.98 million penny shillings in Vipingo Kilifi. SMS Vipingo to double two three six five or call us today on 0740-400-215. Terms and conditions apply. All right, we're getting into uh, the topic of uh, conversation uh, today morning. As we do that, uh, let's quickly take a look at, at the other editorial cartoons. We looked at the one on the standard Wanjiko. This one, you know, Wanjiko wondering which way uh, Nabi, according to this portrayal, Nabi William Ruto uh, telling Wanjiko this is the way. Uh, Rilo Dinga saying, no, 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 this other way. Okay, so when we look at the one on the Daily Nation has to do with China Square, uh, we have a big foot there wearing red socks, a Chinese flag. And then uh, I, I'm not quite clear who this is with the carpet. I suspect, given the glasses, that it may be uh, Lei Cheng, uh, the Chinese director of China Square. Uh, red carpet being rolled out. Moses Kuria has opened the door. There's a sign that says investors are welcome, but there's a brick wall. So no way through. Uh, then uh, when we look at the last one, I think the star has the same one. Yes, the same one. What hustler interests ours or yours? Uh, Moses Kuria here in the middle. Uh, Cheng on the right there with briefcases full of with overflowing cash and uh, the Wananchi on the other side. Okay, topic of conversation. And uh, leading us up to that front page of the Daily Nation spoke about payback, Ruto takes on Uhuru, uh, uh, 
from reversal of policies to revocation of appointments, which you mentioned uh, as we were speaking, Vivian, when we look at uh, page the page 16, Masharia Gaido's opinion piece, I had pulled it up. Here we go. Ruto must now get down to work. They have so much to answer for in terms of undelivered promises on the economy, cost of living, food and fuel pr uh, process. But all they can do is point fingers everywhere but at themselves. And uh, who spoke last? Joyce spoke last. Welcome back round to you. Cynthia, did you speak just before Joyce or was it Vivian? It was Vivian. So Cynthia, I'll come to you uh, now. Uh, in the interest of <laughs> equal time distribution. Uh, <laughs> but uh, on the question of uh, what, what Mashaya Gaiva is talking about, uh, Kenya Kwanza has promised so much. Uh, but really, w what we see in the headlines of what we've been reading about, uh, you know, specula speculation on who will become CAS. Uh, the other day, we saw the creation of the office of the first spouse of the prime cabinet secretary as well as an advisor to that position uh the parastatal appointments that uh, vivian was talking about and she she said uh, we can see the writing on the wall you talked about uh, those being appointed not representing uh, the face of kenya but being shareholders so did kenya kwanza when kenya kwanza told us that they were not interested in sharing out positions were they being disingenuous or are they now like you're saying it's a painful process before you get to the good part are they laying the groundwork uh for addressing all of this um uh, uh first i want to say that um uh, like you said uh, like you said uh, laying down uh whatever the platform for things to move forward you see um there are many promises that were made and i am also a politician <coughs> i also made a number of promises back at home and i want to say that um there are others that will take time to be fulfilled but eventually they'll be fulfilled and you know every time we talk about how bad the situation is I at times want to be a bit objective in uh, rating uh, this government in terms of where are we, where did you come from, and where are we going. You see, like right now, we have been really complaining about the prices of Wunga, but you see, none of those complainers are able to like pause and say, Ingawa imerudi chini kidogo. You know, no one does that. The fuel prices, for the longest time, you remember, have been a bit consistent and with the, without subsidies and all that of course the cooking oil there was a time i would walk into a store and then walk out without the cooking uh, oil but somehow it has come down a bit it's not very painful to actually uh, give them uh, you know uh, a few of those uh, yeah you have done better but we need you to do more you know and that is the general feeling in regards to uh, the issues of um, w uh, how are we laying the foundation for us to be able to deliver you see, uh, someone mentioned about the appointments and said, um, is, is someone trying to uh, like pull out or remove everyone who was in the previous government? I want to say this. You see, every time you are in government, you must have people who actually believe in your agenda. And I think that is what exactly William, President William Ruta is doing. Like, you must be able to believe in my agenda and uh, look like you're going to really work with me to ensure that we achieve this. That is why you have to be appointed. And you see, the policy maker and the policy implementer, they should be reading from the same page. And I can tell you this uh, without, um, without feeling like, uh, um, I don't know how, without I don't know feeling how, <laughs> but I can say this. If you look at the appointments that have been revoked or that have been made, they are not the really, uh, the, 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 the institution memory carriers that have been changed. It's actually the, 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 the cream, the management. Let me tell you this. The details are in the institutional memory carriers. And if you mess up with that, that tells you you're going to mess up with everything. But changing the management where policy is made, you know, I think it's totally okay because you're trying to align this to your agenda. But uh, there's the issue of, uh, you know, so many appointments and all that. You see, when you, every time you walk into a room or when you walk into a house, you have to be able to put things in order. Like you decide where the fridge will sit. And if this fridge is too old, you want to throw it out and bring another one. You have to decide where the seats will face. And you have to decide how many seats do you want in that house? How many seats can sit in your house? And you see, you don't decide and bring in someone who has no responsibility. You must be able to bring in someone that you have a specific responsibility for them. So I think the Kenya Council government is doing well in terms of that. And I am sure this is uh, the groundwork for delivery of the promises so many promises that are meant to the people of Kenya. All right. Uh, Joyce, your thoughts? 
So my question is get down to work. Get down to work. Uh, you know, the Kenya Kwanzaa government in, let's say, um, the appointment of uh, the CASs. So was it legitimate? Of course, we all know that the position was contested, uh, contested and it was adjudicated in the court of law and it was uh, declared to be legal. So is it a legal position? Yes, it is. So on who is to be appointed as CAS? Uh, this is definitely a competitive process whereby interviews will be carried out by the P, uh, PSC and then they will give recommendations to the president and the president shall appoint him as the appointing of authority. He shall appoint the 21 or so CASs that will push the bottom-up agenda forward. And uh, now it gets down to has the government worked so far? Has Have they been pushing the bottom-up agenda. Well, in my opinion, there has been access to affordable credit for hustlers and SMEs and through the Hustler Fund. And that was one of the agenda of the bottom-up uh, of the plan of the Kenya Kwanzaa government. And also the government has ensured that small-scale farmers have access to subsidized farm inputs including fertilizer and this will definitely increase productivity and it will have a multiplying effect whereby it is also eventually uh, having a positive uh, trade balance and reduction of cost of food. So the president in my opinion has been doing a lot and this is something that he's very passionate about and he has injected subsidy on production unlike the pre previous regime where they were injecting subsidies on consumption that is the fuel subsidy and the subsidy on unga so that is definitely something that was not um favorable or uh, or an, uh, or advantageous to the common wananchi but what president ruto is doing with injecting subsidy to uh productivity that is something that will have a ripple effect and it will have a positive effect to how we are living and then there, there also has been projects or affordable housing projects that ensure the ordinary monanchi live a dignified life and you can see the president has been very also very passionate about this program and he has been going around counties and talking to uh, governors uh, to ensure that there is land provision so that the housing projects can, uh, can, can be in place. And uh, further to that, there also uh, is uh, water harvesting through building of dams that the Kenya Kwanzaa government plans to do. And this will support irrigation. And you can see recently he spoke about this. I, I believe it was this weekend he spoke about uh, supporting commercial irrigation in arid areas that is wajir mandera so that they can also be uh, food baskets in kenya and this will definitely increase the economic activity of those regions and it will have a, a positive effect to the common wananchi in wajir wajir i believe when you go to garissa they usually say kenya ikoaje lakini Mi naona kwa serikali hii ya Kenya kwanza. Aita kuwa Kenya ikuwaje. Kusobu now they will have jobs. The economic activity will be increased in those regions. Okay. And uh, the last, uh, <coughs> I, I believe on Sunday, there was a pledge to uh, remove taxes on gas, on cooking gas. And this will definitely lower the cost of living uh, for people. And there was the launch of uh, the locally manufactured gas. That's the Taifa gas. And this will definitely even further reduce the cost of living. All right. Uh, your thoughts on... Uh, I'm seeing Zainab Wandati pulled no punches just like the Taifa Leo uh, with her tag this morning. It's our turn to eat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, what, so in your view, because uh, Azibio and its campaign rallies recently has been saying... Kenya Kwanza told us they were not about sharing out positions. They say turns out they were. What's your view? Well, <laughs> but I'm not going to the Baba Mbogas and the Mama Mbogas because to be honest, everyone so far who's gotten a position somewhere is not a Mama Mboga. Even though during the campaign, they were told in Iserikali a Mama Mboga, blah, blah, blah. And uh, Joyce is talking about a hustler fund giving access 
to, uh, you know, credits to SMEs. I'm thinking, Joyce, you live in Nairobi. How, how far can 500 get you? I mean, it, fair, fair, like just bus fare from point A to point B, averagely is 70 shillings. So if you're going to go to and fro, that's already like 150. You would you call lunch or would you know anything? I think it's, 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 it's a good initiative in terms of the, the, the thought behind it is probably good, but the implementation is just rhetoric. Mm. It's, it's PR. Really, there's nothing tangible around it because it's not, it's not life changing capital. It's not capital that can move, you know, someone, uh, someone's innovation. Like if you're, if you're, if you're innovative, if you're, if you're doing something tech related or something like that, if you just want to buy maybe airtime and bundles, you know, to be online and try and do something, maybe. But for the larger population, it is not, it is not money that you can say, I'm taking this as capital for my business to change my life. Uh, I don't think so. It can, however, you know, help you get a meal for that day, buy airtime for that day, buy something small for that day, depending on what it is. Or if you already have other, other ingredients for production, like you have land or you already have something, then maybe it can help you, you know, one, two, three things here. But it is not, it's not what, it is not what was promised. Mm -hmm. And also at the campaign, the promise was Bila, Bila Riba, without interest. Eh? You will get loans without interest. Does this have interest? Yes. So essentially, what was promised and what is being delivered are two different things. But aside from that, I want to speak to um, Cynthia saying, we should give the government time as we're giving the government time state house their budget has has gone up by 102 mm percent -hmm. so cc to a party muda lakini wao wanaendelea kujilisha they are continuing to eat but us we should be patient we should be patient and wait as they bust their budgets uh, i'm actually in, seeing uh, in just Jenab Wadati even indicated their budget for the presidency has, has risen by 60 percent yeah for, yeah 60 yes and mm -hmm. yani, they've used their annual budget in just seven months. Remember when during the inauguration, when the new government was sworn in, they were like, hakuna pesa, hakuna pesa. Lakini wao wanapata pesa ya kuongeza budget yao. Can, I mean, that is hypocrisy. It's, it, it, it's hypocritical to say there's no money to spend. You people be patient, wait, give us time. But in the meantime, we, our pockets are being lined. Us, we are okay. Our budgets are increasing. Our, we, are, we are very good. In one breath, we will say this is a recalling a mamamboga, but you won't see a single mamamboga in those appointments. They are all, you know, politicians, people who've been governors, senators before, people who are accomplished. It's rewarding loyalists. So uh, it, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's very, very hypocritical. I agree with the article uh, Masharia Gaido is, 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 has written, and I would like to see a turn, a change where the needs of the normal person, the common one, and she actually put first, not, not rewarding loyalists, not, you know, getting money and getting contracts from government. It should be about service delivery. We want better healthcare. We want better infrastructure, agriculture to improve education. Kwanza education, alafu badu mnatuambia, atisijumi natika kuongeza school fees. Tutalipa jayo school fees na nini? So, this government should understand that they are, they are there to work for Kenyans. They are there to represent our interests, not their own. It is not about a company to do with people with shares. Each of us has a share just by virtue of being born and having a birth certificate in this country. Um, I think that's what I want to say. I've forgotten the other point. It, it will come to you, don't worry. It will come to me. <laughs> yeah. Of shareholders, I was remiss in not uh, uh, highlighting this. This is uh, Taifa Leo. This is their editorial cartoon. Uh, cartoon and uh, here we have the shareholders. Uh, what, what does this look like? This looks like a hotel, doesn't it? Uh, with a podium and water and Najivunia kwa shareholder. Meanwhile, uh, the masses are crying for unga. I see an empty uh, plate here. And then uh, the story that sits... Uh, just underneath it is Ruto Gashagwa Wainue Raya Badala ya Kujibizana na Raila. Very true. Um, but uh, I'll come to you, Cynthia, now. 
what, what do you have to say about what Vivian is talking about? The presidency has exceeded or exceeded its budget with, uh, and we still have months to go before this financial year uh, comes to an end. So uh, Joyce is telling us, be patient. You're telling us it's a painful process before we get to the good part. Uh, while we are being patient and, and, and feeling the pinch, is the executive living Sorry, large? Colin. Yes. Uh, just before Cynthia comes in, I've just remembered what mm -hmm. the point was before it disappears again. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we're being told the government is putting in place austerity measures so that, uh, you know, just we can spend what we have. So we, we don't overspend our budgets. But it's just the same point. You're telling us austerity measures, but you are not reading from the same script. What does that tell you? Lean from the front. If you're going to tell us austerity, start putting those austerity measures in your own office first. Okay, your response, Cynthia. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Olive. Um, uh, I want to so speak to a few issues. I want to say first, um, I like uh, how Vivian has brought out the hustler fund thing. Of course, she wanted to make it like a fair and lunch affair at first, but she went back on it and said, yeah, if you have somewhere you can start from, then 500 shillings is a big deal. I want to say there's 500 shillings is a big deal. Maybe not a big deal to someone in Nairobi who wants to pay rent and get fa uh, fair, uh, bus fare to town and uh, back home. But it is a big deal to someone who is in the village, which is uh, our population is entirely <laughs> rural, like to a greater uh, extent. It is really rural. So the idea of the Hustler Fund is use that money on something that can give you a return in a few days or a few months time. On the issue of uh, of interest, you see, I don't know, I don't know why, um, why, why, why the, the 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 I don't know if it's a comment or a saying that uh, nothing comes for free is used selectively. So you will not or you don't expect anything for free in any other quarter. <coughs> when it gets to government, you want it for free. You know, it, it doesn't work. We are just asking that this particular facility has. A better interest in terms of the percentages of course it has an interest and of course for administration purposes and all those kind of things the other thing that I want to talk about that uh, is really uh, looks like it's a thorn in the wrong place in the flesh <laughs> is the issue of uh, the presidential uh, budget I want to say that um, you know setting up olive of the presidency after 10 years is no joke it's not a joke this is a place that you've not been in 10 years and you expect it to come in and keep it running you know, undo some of the things, retain some of the things, bring new things, you know, those kind of things. And again, you know, every time the budgets come up, they say the devil is in the, in the details. I, am, I have seen the budget myself. I'm actually sitting in the Committee of Health and we are looking at the budget. How is it looking? We are looking at the supplementary budget. What are they moving where? For what? And I want to tell you this. The members of parliament in Bunge are first a representative of the people that elected them. We forget about who the president is and the powers that be and look at the details in the budget first before we now ask, okay, bring your CS, let her or him tell us what exactly this is about. But we have first looked at it. I want to say that um, if you looked at what is happening, especially right now, you, you look at most of the money that is being taken and as is, uh, is, is being put in the president's uh, budget uh, is the retirement benefits. The Zillas are now you're going on retire, you should be given your pension, you're going on retire, this should be done and all that. And it's the same Kenyans, Olive, let me tell you this. If you happen not to pay those people, they will be on your neck again saying, hey, we worked for you and you're now abusing us and you're not, you're not giving us uh, the opportunity to be, um, to be paid our dues and all that, uh, and all those kind of things. So I want to say that um, as much as uh, we, of course, the budget uh, is increasing, I don't know why someone chose to focus on the increment in the presidency, the office of the president, and not any other. Are you all aware that there is an increment in the department or state department of health? Like after the two state departments were created, there is a huge increment in terms of the money that was allocated, that was brought from somewhere else, that were brought from foreign trips and all that, reallocated to the Department of Health to be able to fund the other agenda of the government that says uh, UHC, Universal Health Care and all that. So I don't know why, uh, of course there's increment, but we also need to appreciate all the increments. We have um, made the increment in the office of the president look so bad, but it is really necessary, like really, things have to keep running. But no one is mentioning the increment on the other very essential uh, departments and other departments losing the money because it has to be aligned with the agenda of the president. When you say things have to keep running and that we need 
this money in the office of the president. Perhaps you can give us the line items. Well, I, I wish I had uh, come no, with no, it. Just, uh, okay, uh, just um, give us an idea of why they would need more money, why they need all this money. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I want, you see, transitions are expensive, Olive. I think uh, we both agree on that. Transitions are expensive. There's money for transitions. There's uh, money for, you know, all these things. Even there's, uh, the, 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 there's uh, the issues that we are saying, uh, the, the, the office of uh, uh, the new officers who are coming in, you know, you have to budget for them. And, you know, I had someone uh, say that uh, you said you will cut down on expenses, on employments and creation of offices and all that. Why are you then bringing in the CSS? And I'm like, my guy. Are you not even keen on things that happen? There was CSS in the previous regime. And the budget we're dealing with is a budget that was made by the previous regime. So the allocation is actually in the budget. There's nothing that changed. It's still actually in the budget. So um, what of austerity? The promise for austerity? Th there's a lot. Whether it's in the budget or not, there was yes. a promise to cut down the budget. Oh. So why not cut that out of the budget? And also at the campaign, they said they are not about positions. They are not about sharing positions, but serving Kenyans. So how about focus on service delivery and not so much awarding positions to loyalists? Um, that's a very interesting question. Uh, like uh, you have to give services to Kenyans and not award uh, positions. You see, a service has to be offered by someone. Who is the someone? It has to be someone. Whether a loyalist or not, it just has to be someone. So someone has to be there to be able to deliver or offer that service. So that one is, uh, I think it cancels out to zero, zero. For the service to be offered, someone has to offer, offer, offer the service. Because you cannot tell me you want someone to be able to look into the UHC issue and you tell me you do not want anyone manning or managing that particular project. It, it, someone has to do it. So as to uh, the loyalist or not loyalist, um, it, it depends on which side of the fence you're sitting. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like really. So yeah, um, th that one uh, goes without saying. Austerity. I want to say that uh, only there are so many things that have not been happening um, in this government, including are not limited to the National Assembly, where it looks like there's all the money. We have taken a budget cut, a huge one that we're actually fighting about in the House before the supplementary budget is tabled on the floor of the House because the president was straight and said we have to cut down on one, two, three, and four for us to be able to meet this and this and this. So as much as uh, maybe it looks minimal, but at least there's an effort. And like I said, you cannot wake up one day and be able to like overhaul like 100%. You start from 10, 15, 20. By the third year, we are at 40. Then we'll be good at okay. 50 or so. All right. Have the last word this morning, Joyce. So the last one, I would look at the editorial cartoon uh, with the uh, 90 flagging the unga <laughs> plaque. <laughs> so I'm wondering, in six months, um, before six months, unga was at 230 Kenya shillings. Right now, unga is retailing at between 180 to 207 Kenya shillings. Is it that progress? That's my question. So I'm wondering, uh, isn't the government really doing amazing? Six months? Ata mtoto akiwa six months bado atembe. And we can see that there is progress. So, okay, shareholders are you know, VIP section. Oh, they don't need I, the there's not no one in the VIP section really. That's a waiter. There's actually yeah, no one. but he's he's preparing you know meals and and It means when you see one person, it means they are the minority. The majority at this side looking for unga. But there's a possibility that that door is open and all these people yeah, who are, are in going and get in are space. the ones who are going in to sit. Yeah, it looks like they can get sitting there's space inside. No yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, that is one. You can see the cross going down. <laughs> looks like there's one. I will end the conversation <laughs> at that point and make way for your world. I will see you uh, tomorrow night. Uh, but allow me to appreciate my panel this morning before I let them go. The power sharing lie. We've had Cynthia Muge, woman rep, Nandi Vivian Cha, governance and political analyst, Joyce Cheruto, governance and political expert. My name is Olive Burrows. It has been your pleasure being your host. Lady, ladies, it has been a pleasure hosting you. Congratulations to the top 40 and a 40. Good morning.